In an earlier video, we looked at the idea of two functions being inverses of each other, and uh, we covered most of the basics about inverses there. But here I want to look at two unique families of functions that are inverses of each other, uh, namely exponential functions and logarithms. Uh, we study exponentials and logs usually together, whether it be in an algebra class or a calculus class. And the reason they show up together is because they're um, intricately linked together. They're inverses of each other. So in this video, we just kind of kind of want to explore what that means and and uh, how these guys are inverses of each other and just what are some of the implications of that. So here we go. Um, now, th what's going to make this kind of difficult explaining this to a general audience is some textbooks start with exponentials and then show that logarithms are the inverses of exponentials and some do it backwards some start with logarithms and then show that exponentials are the inverse of a log function uh, they're both correct i mean you could technically start with either function uh, i think i'm going to uh, choose to start with exponential functions and then bridge over to logarithms but it could certainly be done in the opposite direction so you recall from your algebra classes that an exponential function is something that's b to the x. b is your base. So 2 to the x, 5 to the x, 10 to the x, the, um, the always popular e to the x. All these guys are exponential functions. And I really just want to highlight one feature about this guy. I know when we did the videos on exponentials, we covered lots and lots of properties. But I want to key in on one thing. Exponential functions are one to one. That's a special property that says that they pass the vertical line test which makes them functions, but they also pass the horizontal line test, which makes them invertible functions. So because this passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test, this guy is going to have an inverse, right? So that's a great property about exponential functions. So this, this guy does have an inverse. Now the question is, is what, what is his inverse and what does it look like? Well, if you've already watched our video on studying inverse functions graphically, then you recall that to get a function's inverse, what you do is you look at the graph of y equals x and you reflect your graph across that line, across that 45 degree line. So here's a graph of the exponentials inverse function. Um, now, I don't technically at this point know who he is, but I'll go ahead and give you his name. We don't know a lot about him yet, but this orange graph here is called a logarithm. So that's the that's our first experience with the inverse of an exponential function. Logarithms look like this, and they are the inverse of exponential functions. And there, there's some things we can already tell about these logarithm guys uh, just based off of the graph like its domain and its range and that sort of thing but um, before we get to all that stuff let's figure out how do we even how do we find this guy well if you watched our other video on uh, studying inverse functions algebraically we talked about how you would go about actually finding somebody's inverse and the idea went something like this they said okay uh, first we're going to take the f of x out and replace it with the letter y so we have y equals b to the x. And the, the thing that's special about the inverse relation is it'll take a point x, y and change it to be the point y, x. And normally this doesn't cause much trouble at all. We have x equals b to the y as opposed to y equals b to the x. Seems very simple. Uh, this guy right here is already the inverse. Um, this is the inverse guy right here. Uh, and normally the, the usual step from here on is just to simply retrieve your y. You might have to subtract a number away or divide a number away. But there's something uniquely hard about this particular situation. The y that we're supposed to be solving for is stuck up in the exponent, unfortunately. And so when you think through your algebra operations, I have no idea how to get him down. I can't divide because B is not being multiplied. I can't subtract because it's not being added. Um, you know, I, I, I'm stuck. I can't take a square root because that's not squared. And so our normal operations that we're familiar with, um, none of them are, are unfortunately applicable. So if you're trying to do some magic step and get Y equals 
something so that we could get that inverse function, uh, you're not going to find it. It's, it's, um, there's no good operation to do. So what we wind up doing is, is kind of a strange thing. We're actually going to leave it like this. We're going to leave this expression the way it is, but we're simply going to write it in a new way. We're going to say, you know what? Okay. I know this is the inverse relationship, but I'm going to write it in a different way. And I'm going to express this like this. I'm going to say that y equals, and here's where logarithms came from, y equals log base b of x. And these two guys right here, this line and this line are equivalent. They're exactly the same. This is an exponential form of a logarithm, and this is a, a logarithmic way of writing the expression. So, but they're, they're both 100% equal. And uh, we could go through some examples, I don't think I'm going to, of how you could write something one way and it'd be equivalent to writing it the, the other way. Okay, so uh, that's our first exposure to, to logarithms here. So now we can actually call these guys something. This is b to the x, and this is log base b of x. And for these to be in true inverses of each other, these bases have to match. So 4 to the x is only an inverse to log base 4 of x. If you had log base 5 of x, they wouldn't be inverses. So the bases do have to agree to, uh, to one another. Uh, so, uh, one stationary point that always stays the same, anything to the 0 power is always 1, as well as log of any base of 1 is always 0. So 0, 1 converts to 1, 0 for the log function. Uh, a couple properties that, and this is just a direct result of being inverses of each other. If you compose both of these guys, if you stick one inside of the other in either direction, in either order, log base b of b to the x or b raised to the log base b of x, you compose these guys either way, both ways you should get x out, right? And that's what confirms that these guys really, these guys uh, really are inverses of each other. All right. Now, uh, in particular, there's one special exponential function that we deal with all the time. And as a consequence, there's going to be one special logarithm we deal with all the time. Now, the special exponential function is e to the x. This guy shows up everywhere in nature and financial math and biology and chemistry and physics and engineering and all these courses. Well, it only makes sense that the logarithm associated with him would also be important log base e of x now if you if you've seen this guy right here if you see what i just wrote there you say well man i don't think i've ever seen anything like that before um are you sure you know is that right well it is but the thing is is because this guy is so incredibly popular and we use him so often we actually give him his own special notation, his own reserved notation. Nobody else has written like this. But if you specifically mean log base e, we're going to express this as ln of x. And this is what's known as a natural logarithm. And that complements the natural exponential function. And so these guys are specifically inverses of each other. All right, so just to close out this video, I've got one quick example. So let's say we had e to the 2x plus 1 equals 82, and you wanted to solve for x. Well, you have to undo every operation that's done. So this addition will be undone by subtraction, the multiplication by division, and the exponential by a logarithm. So we're going to start getting by getting rid of the e by taking the natural log of both sides. Natural log and e being inverses of each other will cancel. And so we'll get 2x plus 1 equals the natural log of 82. Now the natural log button is on your calculators on the left-hand side here. Uh, we just type in natural log of 82. That'll be some decimal, about 4.407, 4.407 rounded. Okay, and then we'll subtract 1. So 2x equals 3.407, and then we'll divide both sides by 2. And so final answer, we get x equals 1.7035, if I did that algebra correctly. Okay, so this will be the correct x value that will be the uh, solution to this original equation back up here at the top. So we can see how helpful these logarithms are 
and solving equations that have exponentials in them. And even though I didn't do an example here, the exponentials are helpful for solving equations that have logarithms in them. So they're very nice complements to one another. And they're just one example of uh, two families of functions that are inverses uh, of one another.